Hello my dear students, a very good morning all of you. I am Shashank and I welcome you all on Exampur SSC English Medium YouTube channels which is a complete English medium dedicated to English medium students guys. So first of all very good morning everyone and welcome to the session and please confirm your attendance guys then we are going to start the session and today in the morning we have a generic session for SSC CPO, CHSL and stenographer exam. And in this session, we are going to discuss the previous year paper 28. So this is the 28th session of the previous year series and that we will be continue till the CPO examination. So first of all, very good morning all of you and welcome to the session and please confirm your attendance as well. Okay, so let's start the session guys. Let's begin the session of today. So let's start the session. So Harish, good morning and welcome to the session guys. So good morning all of you and welcome to the session. So welcome to the session everyone. Now let's start the session. Let's begin the session. And this is the previous year paper 28 of SSC, C, SSC CPO, CHSL and Stenographer series. So let's start the session and here is the first question that is before you. So the session starts with a easy question. So session starts with a easy question that high court of Andaman Nicobar Island is located in which state of India. So the jurisdiction of Andaman Nicobar that is given to which state of India guys the judicial capital of Andaman and Nicobar it is in which state of India that is the question. Is it Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh or Karnataka? So jurisdiction of Andaman and Nicobar, it is given to which High Court of India? So Andaman Nicobar jurisdiction, which High Court of India? So K. Harish, you are saying option B. So that is in West Bengal. So yes, guys, correct answer will be West Bengal. Correct answer will be West Bengal. It is given to Calcutta High Court. It is given to Calcutta High Court guys, so that is given to Calcutta High Court, the jurisdiction of Andaman and Nicobar and therefore guys it is said that the judicial capital of Andaman Nicobar that is in Calcutta because the High Court it is located in Calcutta. Now for Tamil Nadu the jurisdiction of jurisdiction of Puducherry. Jurisdiction of Puducherry guys it is given to Tamil Nadu High Court. Now Andhra Pradesh the capital is Amravati so the High Court it is in Amravati that is the latest and High Court of Karnataka that is the jurisdiction it is of Karnataka that is in Bengaluru that is in Bengaluru. that is in Bangaluru. So correct answer will be option B guys that is West Bengal and West Bengal guys Calcutta it is the oldest high court of India that was established in year 1862. So this is the oldest high court of India which was established in year 1862. So correct answer will be option B that is West Bengal and the jurisdiction of Lakshwadeep it is given to Kerala high court that is in Trivendra. So jurisdiction of Lakshwadeep, jurisdiction of Lakshwadeep, it is given to which high court that is given to Kerala, high court that is in Trivendram, that is in Trivendram. So correct answer will be guys option. B that is the West Bengal High Court. So Andaman Nicobar jurisdiction it is given to West Bengal High Court. Now guys let's come to the next question. Next question is also an easy question to answer. Ki which of the following state do not have bicameral legislative? 
सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेट गाइज डू नॉट हैव द बाई कैमरल लेजिस्लेचर बाई कैमरल लेजिस्लेचर Which of the following do not have the bicameral legislature? Is it Madhya Pradesh, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, or Bihar? Bicameral legislature means that legislature legislature will have two houses. That is the meaning of it. So legislature will have two houses. That is the meaning of bicameral legislature. And bicameral legislature we have adopted from Britain. So concept of bicameral legislature. it is adopted from britain and in center we have the two houses rajya sabha and lok sabha bicameral legislature that is not in madhya pradesh so madhya pradesh it is a unicameral cameral legislature that means it has only legislative assembly and total six states they have bicameral legislature total six state they have bicameral legislature bihar up mp sorry bihar up not mp bihar up then आंध्र प्रदेश तेलंगाना देन महाराष्ट्र प्लस कर्नाटक सो दे ऑल आर द एडजेंट स्टेट एज वेल सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी गाइज ऑप्शन ए दैट इज मध्य प्रदेश एंड रेस्ट ऑफ देम दे हैव द बाई बाई you can say bicameral legislature that means ki they have legislative assembly plus legislative council sir question number 2 question number 2 vikramaditya it is asking ki which of the state do not have bicameral bicameral legislature simply means ki the legislature will have two houses like in parliament guys in the center we have rajya sabha lok sabha so parliament has two houses so same is the bicameral legislature for the states so which of the states do not have the bicameral means ki which of the following state do not have the two houses so correct answer will be madhya pradesh madhya pradesh only one house that is legislative assembly it does not have legislative council and out of the 28 states six states of india they have the bicameral legislature that it means it has legislative assembly plus legislative council so these are the names of the state where the legis bicameral legislature is there so correct answer will be option b guys that is madhya pradesh so harika good morning and welcome to the session everyone so this was all about the explanation of this question now let's come to the next question ki guru gopinath was an exponent of so guru gopinath is an exponent of kathak kathakali kuchipudi bharatnatyam so guru gopinath is an exponent means he is a doyan of which dance form kathak kathakali kuchipudi bharatnatyam Exponent means he is a very famous dancer or he is a class he is a personality with that is related to which dance form of India. so guru gopinath guys is an exponent of which dance form so guru gopinath is an exponent of kathakali dance form so he is an exponent of kathakali and it is done in kerala kathak it is in uttar pradesh the very famous personality that is birju maharaj who died recently so he was at kathak doyan 
देन कुचीपुड़ी कुचीपुड़ी इट इज इन आंध्र प्रदेश आंध्र प्रदेश दैट इज द नेम ऑफ अ विलेज ऑल्सो सो कुचीपुड़ी गाइज विच इज इन आंध्र प्रदेश इट इज द नेम ऑफ अ विलेज ऑल्सो एंड भरतनाट्यम भरतनाट्यम इट इज इन तमिलनाडु भरतनाट्यम इट इज इन तमिलनाडु दैट ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम द नाट्य शास्त्र ऑफ भरत मुनि एंड दीज आर ऑल क्लासिकल डांसेज ऑफ इंडिया सो दीज आर ऑल क्लासिकल डांसेज ऑफ इंडिया and total classical dance we have eight so the number of classical dance that is approved by sangeet natak academy it is total eight and out of these they are the four classical dances and he is from kerala so he is an exponent of kathakali kathakali plus mohini attam both are from kerala so from kerala we have two classical dance one is kathakali plus mohini अट्टम कथक कली प्लस मोहिनी अट्टम दे आर द डांस फॉर्म ऑफ केरल सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी गाइस ऑप्शन बी दैट इज कथक कली नाउ कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इज एन इजी क्वेश्चन एंड इट इज आल्सो रिलेटेड टेक्निकली टू द आर्ट एंड कल्चर सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वॉज सत्यजीत रे एसोसिएटेड सो देर इज अ वेरी फेमस डायरेक्टर ओके सीपीओ का एग्जाम है ग्यारह नवंबर को बनारस में ओके सतीश ओके डी इज द राइट आंसर सो येस इट इज ट्रेंडिंग एंड एवरी वन दे आर कॉल्ड डी येस सो डायरेक्शन डायरेक्शन ऑफ द फिल्म एंड द मोस्ट फेमस फिल्म सो द फेमस फिल्म वन इज पाथेर पांचाली देन यू हैव शतरंज के खिलाड़ी सो दीज आर द टू वेरी फेमस फिल्म सो पाथेर पांचाली शतरंज के खिलाड़ी दीज ऑल आर द फिल्म दैट इज डायरेक्टेड बाई हिम एंड सत्यजीत रे फिल्म एंड टेलीविजन इंस्टीट्यूट दैट इज ऑल्सो लोकेटेड इन कैलकटा सो सत्यजीत रे फिल्म एंड टेलीविजन इंस्टीट्यूट that is located in kolkata and he is a very famous bengali music uh, bengali director of the movies so correct answer will be guys option d that is direction of the film shatranj ke khiladi pather panchali they are the very famous films of him and satyajit ray film and television institute that is also located in calcutta or kolkata so correct answer will be option d that is the direction of films now guys come to the next question next question is ki which of the following is a classical dance form so which of the following is a classical dance form guys the question is is it bhangra bharatnatyam kalbeliya or vangla so which of the following is is a classical dance form ओके सो लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर गाइज के विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ क्लासिकल डांस फॉर्म इज इट भांगड़ा भरतनाट्यम कालबेलिया एंड वांगला सी गाइज आउट ऑफ दिस द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन बी दैट इज भरतनाट्यम एंड भरतनाट्यम इट इज फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु एंड वेरी फेमस 
क्लासिकल डांसर दैट इज हेमा मालिनी हेमा मालिनी शी इज अ वेरी फेमस मूवी एक्ट्रेस प्लस शी इज एन एम पी ऑफ लोकसभा फ्रॉम मथुरा कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी शी इज अ डांसर ऑफ भरतनाट्यम सो शी इज अ ट्रेंड क्लासिकल डांसर ऑफ भरतनाट्यम नाउ भांगड़ा इट इज इन पंजाब इट्स अ वेरी फेमस डांस फॉर्म दैट इज डिड बाई द मेल देन कालबेलिया इट इज ऑफ द राजस्थान एंड इट इज ऑल्सो फेमसली नोन एज नागिन डांस then wangla wangla it is of the which state of india so can you tell me about wangla it is of which state of india wangla wangla guys it is located in which state of india so wangla it is located in which state of india can you tell me the answer wangla which state of india Wangla guys, that is in which state of India? Wangla. Okay, very good. Meghalaya, and that is being celebrated in this particular month. So it is in Meghalaya, and this is celebrated in the harvest season. That is in the November month. So this is celebrated. This is did in the harvest season. That is specially in the November month. So it is did in the November month. harvest season november month that is harvest season that is in november month so correct answer will be guys option a that is bharatnatyam famous movie actress hema malini she is a trained bharatnatyam dancer so they sometimes they ask you about the dancer as well so once it comes to hema malini despite being an mp of lok sabha from mathura constituency she is a very trained classical dancer so correct answer will be option b i hope guys that should be clear to everyone and these are the good questions that may come in your cpo chsl examination and right now you have the cpo in the line so don't leave any stone unturned for the cpo now guys a big news is coming from the side of center that ministry of civil aviation has changed the name of an airport so can you tell me ki ministry of civil aviation today has changed the name of an airport so which airport it is so today ministry of civil aviation has changed the name of an airport so ministry of civil aviation has changed the name of airport has changed the name of an airport what is the what is the name of that airport what and what is the changed name so ministry of civil aviation today guys just uh, uh, in the morning changed the uh, news came ki ministry of civil aviation has changed the name of an airport so which airport it is and what is the change name of that airport can you tell me the answer this is the question from the current affairs so i will be uploading a video on it also but by the time when i got this news so then i thought to share with you all so which is the airport and what is the change name no no it is not shirdi airport it is not shirdi airport it is very near to delhi so it is not a shirdi airport uh, vikramaditya it is not shirdi airport notification has already been issued so which is the airport guys this is a union territory let me give you a big hint it is a union territory so it is not a state guys it is not a district it is a union territory now can you tell me the name of that airport it is a union territory now the notification has been issued notification has been issued by ministry of civil aviation to change the name of an airport and it is a union territory actually guys this is chandigarh airport and the new name the proposed new name is shahid bhagat singh airport so it is the chandigarh airport and the new name that is the new proposed name new proposed name is shahid bhagat singh airport
शहीद भगत सिंह एयरपोर्ट सो दैट इज चंडीगढ़ दैट इज चंडीगढ़ एयरपोर्ट एंड इट इज नाउ बींग नोन एज सो नोटिफिकेशन हैज ऑलरेडी इशूड बाई द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सिविल एविएशन सो दैट इज शहीद भगत सिंह एयरपोर्ट दैट इज चंडीगढ़ एयरपोर्ट ओके सो दैट इज शहीद भगत सिंह एयरपोर्ट सो आई विल बी मेकिंग अ स्मॉल वीडियो ऑन इट सो दैट मैक्सिमम स्टूडेंट शुड नो अबाउट इट सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन बी नाउ गाइज कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑल्सो एन इजी क्वेश्चन कि देर इज अ स्पोर्ट्स कॉल्ड मलखंब मलखंब इट इज द स्पोर्ट्स ऑफ विच स्टेट सो इट इज दन आर्ट और सिंपली यू कैन से दैट स्टेट स्पोर्ट ऑफ विच स्टेट्स स्टेट मलखंब मलखंब इट इज द स्पोर्ट्स ऑफ विच स्टेट इट्स अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन गाइज इन विच देर इज अ वेरी बिग लॉग इन विच द पीपल ट्राई टू क्लाइंब दैट लॉग ओके लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर मलखम इट इज द आर्ट ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश सो इट इज रिलेटेड टू मध्य प्रदेश गाइस एंड फ्रॉम केरल इट इज कल्लरी कल्लरी पयट्टू दैट इज अ मार्शल आर्ट्स सो मलखम इट इज द स्पोर्ट्स ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश Malkham guys it is a very famous sports in which it is also the state's sport of Madhya Pradesh it is also the state sports of Madhya Pradesh so correct answer will be option a recently in national games definitely it got recently in national games also so it was included in the national games also that is the malkham okay what is parsi new year guys that's a simple question to know ki what is the parsi new year hmm uh, in our university we used to see malkham malkham it is now become a very popular sports guys it is very popular sports now it is and it is declared as the state's sport of the madhya pradesh region so what is the parsi new year it is an easy question to answer in fact parsi because the question may come from the parsi religion because of the death of cyrus mistri who was an ex chairman of tata group and uh, due to their burial process they are also very much in news so parsi new year guys it is known as navroz it is known as navroz and it was started in india started by balban in india and it was ended by ended by aurangzeb and parsi they are the residents of iran residents of iran and when muslim invasion happened in iran so they migrated to the different parts of the world but maximum population of the parsis they live in the india so maximum population either they are in इधर दे आर इन महाराष्ट्र एंड सम ऑफ द पारसी दे ऑल्सो लिव इन द गुजरात रीजन सो इट इज नवरोज नाउ गाइज उगादी इट इज अ न्यू ईयर सेलिब्रेटेड इन आंध्र प्रदेश प्लस तेलंगाना प्लस अ वेरी फेमस दैट इज द कर्नाटका देन गुड़ी पाड़वा इट इज इन महाराष्ट्र and punthandu that is in tamil nadu these are all the name different names of the new year now guys whenever you will read about parsis parsis their burial place burial place the question may come it is called tower of silence and it is also called dakhma dakhma in their language so it is also called dakhma that is in their parsi that is in their avestan language and you will find guys ki the burial method the burial process of parsi it is called sky burial so the burial process of the parsi that is called sky burial so they can ask you the question ki what is the burial places of the parsis they are known as so burial places of parsis they are known as tower of silence in english or dakhma in their avestan language other than this burial process it is called sky burial so sky burial it is the process through which the parsis 
what they do they put the body in the open space that is in the tower of silence so that the carnivorous birds like vulture eagle they come and eat the body and there are three different chambers that is being made one is for male one is for female and other is for the children so that is their burial process and burial process is called sky burial so that day i can ask you okay, what is the name of the burial process of parsis that is called sky burial and their god is called ahura mazda their god is called ahura mazda so correct answer will be option b and their place of worship is called fire temple so place of worship worship of parsi they are called fire temple and it is called atish behram this is also called atish behram that is in their avestan language and their prophet is zoraster their prophet is zoraster and their religious book religious book is called zend avesta that is written in avestan language that is written in avestan language that is zend avesta so that you can remember about the parsis actually they are from iran ratan tata is parsi saras mystery other than this uh, uh, other than this you will find a uh, very famous parsi dada bhai nehru ji sfj maniksha who was the second field marshal of india they are all parsi people so parsis guys they will find very unique unique titles kri wala batli wala daru wala topi wala this type of titles they are generally being taken by parsi people very few in number but one of the richest communities of india very few in number their population is not more than 5 lakhs but they are very rich community like fari nariman rohington nariman they are parsi people so they are very much in active in the law military industries so they are very much active people very less in number although very rich community so correct answer will be guys option b that is navroz i hope guys that is clear about the parsi religion also about the navroz and punthandu that is related to tamil nadu new year so tamil new year is called punthandu is it clear guys then please let me know then i will be moving to the next question to discuss is it clear to all of you and this year you should know about the parsi parsi religion because there is too much chance of the question that may come in the examination about the parsis about the parsis because saras mystery died and their method is a typical method which is not being commonly used in india so we have never seen we have never heard in fact that the dead body is kept in the open space for the uh, for the uh, birds carnivorous birds to eat we have not seen this but this happens in the parsi so they are bit different type of community a person cannot adopt the parsi religion they are very much uh, sophisticated about their religion so if a person wishes to change the religion any person who is non parsi cannot become a parsi any person wishes to change the religion and wants to become parsi they are not allowed in fact so correct answer will be guys option b so changing the religion sometimes the people changes their religion adopts new religion but to become parsi from another religion that is not allowed and if any person marries outside the parsi community so that is not taken as a good thing for the parsi people so correct answer will be option b now guys come to a very easy question ki who among the following conceived the kakori train action in 1925 so kakori train action in 1925 who were the people associated with it is it bakunth nath sukla manmat hazara ram prasad bismil ashfaqullah khan and udaydullah ubaydullah sindhi what about the freedom of religion so in their religion guys it is not being accepted so if a person is not a parsi you cannot become adopt parsi religion so that is highly prohibited in their religious matters so we have right to freedom of religion but 
you will find ki some special privileges are given to this community because they are the one of the richest communities of India. So if a person wishes to adopt Parsi religion, they are not allowed to do. That you can see in the Smriti Irani case, although his husband Zubin Irani is a Parsi, but Smriti Irani still is Hindu. So correct answer guys of this question that is Kakori train action that happened on 9th August 1925. 9th August 1925 that was Ram Prasad Bismil and Ashfaq Ullah Khan. Maximum of the revolutionaries in which eight down train was targeted by HRA and you will find Ki Ram Prasad Bismil maximum of the revolutionaries who were associated with this they were arrested and they were hanged also. Ram Prasad Bismil he was hanged in Gorakhpur Central Jail. Central Jail, then Ashfaq Ullah Khan, Ashfaq Ullah Khan, he was also hanged in Faizabad, Faizabad Jail. So whosoever they were arrested, they all were hanged and only the person who escaped was Chandra Shekhar Azad. The person who escaped, that was Chandra Shekhar Azad. So, correct answer will be option C, that is Ram Prasad Bismil and Ashfaq Ullah Khan. So, both were arrested guys and both were hanged in the different central jail, Ram Prasad Bismil, Gorakhpur, then Ashfaq Ullah Khan, Faizabad, now it is called Ayodhya. Therefore, correct answer will be option C. Now guys, come to the next question, in 1918, Gandhi ji organized Satyagra in Kheda district of Gujarat to support cotton mill workers who were demanding the better wages, tribal whose customary rights was being violated, women who were struggling against the oppressive patriarchal system, peasants who were affected by the crop failure and, pandem and plague pandemic. Plague epidemic. So what was the reason to start the Kheda? Uh, what was the reason to start Kheda Satyagra? Okay, Harika, you are saying option A, that is the cotton mill workers. Okay, Vikramaditya is also going with option A, good. So guys, feel free to give your options so that if it is wrong, then it will be rectified and you will learn something new. And if it is right, then definitely will boost your confidence. Okay, let's see the correct answer. Okay, Vikramaditya, everyone, they are going with option A. See guys, what will be the correct answer? Actually guys, the correct answer will be option D. Maximum of you, they are confused. This was for the Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad mill movement. That happened in 1918. So that was for the cotton textile mill workers who were demanding 50% increment in the wages. But the mill owners, they were giving 20% increment. Now Gandhi ji came, he saw the condition, then he, then he did an agreement in which 35% hike was given to the uh, cotton mill workers and in this Gandhi ji did first hunger strike, first hunger strike in India. So first hunger strike in India that was did by Gandhi ji in the cotton textile mill workers that is Ahmedabad mill movement. Now, peasants who were affected by the crop failure and pandemic, that was why, that was for the Kheda, Kheda movement. And this, in this movement, Gandhi ji was invited by Indu Lal Yagnik. Gandhi ji was invited by Vallabh Bhai Patel, Vallabh Bhai Patel plus Indu Lal. Yagnik. Gandhi ji was invited by uh, Vallabh Bhai Patel and Indu Lal Yagnik and they both assisted Gandhi ji after which the tax was after which the payment of the tax to the British government was being stopped. So correct answer will be guys option D that peasants who were affected by the crop failure and plague epidemic due to which the productivity was the less than 25% and according to the British law, if the productivity is less than 25%, the full tax will be exempted. So this was for the tax exemption for the farmers. So this was for the tax exemption. 
for farmers. This was for the tax exemption for the farmers. So, correct answer will be guys option D. Okay, so guys, this was about the Kheda movement and this was for the tax exemptions for the farmers. So, let's come to the next question and let's see what next question is for us. Next question is, ki, as a reaction to the Rollet Act, Dash was organized as a National Humiliation Day. So, which day was organized as a National Humiliation Day on the to oppose the Rollet Act? So, is it 4th June 1921, 6th April 1919, 2nd February 1913 or 8th May 1920? It's a very, very, very easy question. If you just know in which year Rollet Act was being introduced, you can answer the questions properly. So, which was organized as the National Humiliation Day? Guys, first of all, Rollet Act, that was called Anarchial and Revolutionary Crimes Act. So, anarchical and revolutionary crimes act, anarchical and revolutionary crimes act that is called Rollet Act and it was being introduced on the 6th April 1919. So, that was called the National Humiliation Day and first All India Strike. All India strike was held on that day. First All India strike was held on that day. So that was the 6th April 1919 and it was during the time of Lord Chelmsford. This was during the time of Lord Chelmsford 1916 to 1921. So, that was during the time of Lord Chelmsford 1916 to 1921. So, correct answer will be option B. So, that was an easy question for all of you guys to answer. Ki first, All India Strike that was did by Mahatma Gandhi against the Rollet Act because it was violating the principles of Habeas Corpus. So, it was violating the writ Habeas Corpus. Habeas Corpus that was to present the body. So that was violating the writ Habeas Corpus to present the body. Therefore, this was being challenged and none of the Indians they were satisfied. So this Rollet Act was also known as Black Law. Called Black Law and called Anarchial. and revolutionary crimes act so this is also called anarchical and revolutionary crimes act that is called rollet act and it was proposed by sir sydney rollet proposed by sir sydney rollet so correct answer will be option b now, come to the next question, ki which Indian territory was formerly called Blackwater before independence? So, which territory was called Blackwater before independence? Okay, so which territory is called Blackwater before independence, guys? Is it Lakshadweep, Andaman, Nicobar, Diu or Abbottabad? 
So black water that is also called Kala Pani. Kala Pani and that was Andaman and Nicobar. And in Andaman and Nicobar guys we have the very famous cellular gel. Cellular gel that was called Kala Pani because it was surrounded from the water from all side and if you wish to cross the if you wish to escape from this jail from where you will escape so finally you will go in water you will go in Bay of Bengal and it is very hard to just swim across the Bay of Bengal to get rescued so the rescue from this place escaping from this place was just an impossible therefore it is called Kala Pani and the notorious and those criminals who are very much uh, you can say ki who are very much uh, uh, who are very much dangerous for the British government they were kept in this jail so the dangerous criminals they were kept in this cellular jail so dangerous criminals plus revolutionaries they were kept in this jail that is called Kala Pani that is called cellular jail that is called Kala Pani that is in Andaman and Nicobar Island so correct answer will be guys option B that is Andaman and Nicobar Okay guys, come to the next question, ki what was the chief objective of the Wahhabi movement? What was the chief objective of Wahhabi movement? That is called cellular jail. Okay, in which year, what was the chief objective of this Wahhabi movement, guys? So, chief objective of this Wahhabi movement to forge cordial relation with the British to purify Islam, to improve the condition of the women and adopt a rational education. Guys, Wahhabi movement that started in around 1820 AD and it was started by Sayyid Ahmad Barelvi. And this was named after Shah Abdul Wahab. It was named after Shah Abdul Wahab who was from Saudi Arab, Saudi Arabia. And he was the mentor. He was the religious mentor of Sayyid Ahmad Barilvi. And the main objective was to purify Islam. And it was an Islamic reformist revivalist movement. So the nature of this movement was Islamic revivalist movement and revivalist movement that means ki those who believe in the old traditions and practices those who believe those who believe that is the ancient tradition ancient tradition is best tradition And their objective was to purify the Islam. That means to bring changes in Islam. And what type of changes in Islam? So what type of changes? Type of changes they wanted to introduce. That was, that was to purify the type of changes. That means they wanted to establish Islam which is based on Quran and Hadith. So they wanted that Islam which is based on Quran and Hadith. Therefore they are called the revivalist movement and Hadith is the saying and doing of Prophet Muhammad.
saying and doing of the Prophet Muhammad is called Hadith. So the objective of this movement was to purify the Islam and it was a it was a revivalist movement. Revivalist movement means that movement which is based ki how to introduce that means ki which tradi the old traditions since they are the best traditions according to them they are called revivalist and reformists which want to change the society and the method. Like example can be of R A Samaj. R.A. Samaj that was started in 1875 that was also a revivalist movement that was also a revivalist movement that was also a revivalist movement like R.A. Samaj this is also a revivalist movement Okay guys, so correct answer will be option C, B. Now come to the next question, ki who was the ruler of Delhi when Ahmad Shah Abdali defeated Marathas in the third battle of Panipat? So who was the ruler of the Delhi guys when Ahmad Shah Abdali defeated the Marathas? So who was the ruler of Delhi at that point of time? This is a very easy question. Okay, Alamgir first. Okay, Muhammad Shah, Jahadar Shah, Shah Alam. Okay, let's see the correct answer, guys. First of all, Ahmad Shah Abdali was from Durrani dynasty. So, correct answer will be Shah Alam second, who is also known as Ali Gohar. Ali Gohar, during his time period, the third battle of Panipat was being fought in which Ahmad Shah Abdali brutally defeated the Marathas. And Ahmad Shah Abdali was from Durrani dynasty. Durrani dynasty and he was from Afghanistan. And during the time of Alamgir first, during the time of Alamgir, it is Alamgir first was Aurangzeb. And during the time of Alamgir second, the two famous battles that was fought one was the invasion of Ahmad Shah Abdali invasion of Ahmad Shah Abdali and then battle of Palasi battle of Palasi both happened in 1757 Ahmad Shah Abdali invaded for the first time in India in January 1757 and then you have the Battle of Palasi that was fought on 23rd June 1757. That was during the time of Alamgir II. Now Muhammad Shah Rangila, during his time period, the Battle of Karnal, Battle of Karnal was being fought in which uh, Nadir Shah defeated Mughal army. and took away Kohinoor, Kohinoor diamond, peacock throne and guys he took away one more precious diamond. So generally we know that when Nadir Shah invaded India and defeated the Mughals in 1737 the battle of Karnal he took away Kohinoor diamond and also the peacock throne but he took away two precious diamond one it is called Kohinoor. What is the next? What is the name of the other diamond? So he took away two diamonds. One is Kohinoor. Hmm. What was the name of the another diamond? Can you tell me ki what was the name of the another diamond that was being taken by Nadir Shah? What was the name of the another diamond that was being taken by Nadir Shah? So the next diamond that was called Daryae Noor. Daryae Noor. We don't have the evidence about Daryae Noor diamond, guys. 
and this Kohinoor Darjai Noor is called sister of Kohinoor. Kohinoor diamond. So this Daniyae Noor diamond is also called Kohinoor and the present evaluation of Kohinoor diamond is 5150,000 crore rupees. So present valuation of this Kohinoor diamond is 150,000 crore rupees and that is just 105.6 carat. So now the weight of the Kohinoor, it is now in oval in shape. It is oval shaped and the, it is 105. 0.6 carat so it is around 21 grams so it is now around 21 grams and the present evaluation is 150000 crore rupees that is the kohinoor diamond that is in the crown of the monarch of the queen of britain so that is in the crown that is in the crown of queen of britain so whosoever becomes the queen they also becomes what is the meaning of kohinoor that means light of the world Sorry, uh, not light of the world, it is the light of the mountain. Kuh means mountain, Noor means light. So, Kuh means mountain and Noor means light. So, Kohinoor means light of the mountain. Okay, Vikramaditya, so that means the light of the mountain. Kohinoor, that means light of the mountain. Kohinoor. And the sister of Kohinoor diamond is considered as Daryae Noor, but we don't have the evidence of Daryae Noor ki where it is, where it is. So Kohinoor now it is in the official crown of the Queen of Britain. So if a person becomes, if the male person becomes king, that the king, that the crown will not be worn by him. Actually, it will be worn by his spouse. Like now, Charles III is the king. Charles III will not wear that crown in which Kohinoor is there. So his wife Camilla will wear that crown. That is Charles III. Now it is not Charles II, it is Charles III. So the present monarch of Britain, earlier he was Prince Charles, now he became Charles, King Charles III. So it is King Charles III Vikramaditya, not King Charles II. It is King Charles III. Now guys, come to the next question. Ki who, when East India Company was formed, who was the Mughal Emperor in India? So when East India Company was formed, who was the Mughal Emperor? And your options are Jahangir, Humayu, Aurangzeb, or Akbar. Last question. So when East India Company was formed, guys, who was the Mughal Emperor, East India Company, British East India Company was formed in 1600 AD and the founders were John Watt and George White and at that point of time the king was Akbar, 1556 to 1605 and in 1608 when Captain Hawkins came, Captain Hawkins, who was ambassador, ambassador of James I, then the king was Jahangir, then the king was guys Jahangir. So correct answer will be option D, that is Akbar. Okay. So students, with this, I sum up the session of today and I hope you must have enjoyed the session and found this useful and interesting. So don't forget to like and share the video as well as if you are new to our channel, please subscribe the Example SSC English Medium YouTube channel and this is the study plan of our YouTube sessions. For the morning, it will be for the all the exams and for evening targeting only the CGL. So that was all for the day. Bye-bye everyone and let's again meet at 5 p.m. today itself.